we have a further hacker waiting to be served <laughs> by the post office. Without arms and legs. Right, right, right. Uh, like that, that's a German Direct. saying, das Bild entsteht im Auge des Betrachters. <laughs> okay. So, this is really a different situation. This is really a larger number than Omega. It's larger than Omega. And I don't want you to accept this uh, on faith. I want you to understand why this is really a larger number than Omega. And the way to understand it is to think about what's the day when each person will get served. Let's just check it. So this hacker will get served immediately. This one will be served the day after that. Then this on the second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and so on. One millionth day, one billionth day, and so on, and so on. When will this person be served? Never. Never, right. Uh, I want to be a little bit more optimistic. So this last person standing here, this person will be served after the end of time. Okay. So this hacker has to wait until the end of the time, and then she will get served. Okay. Good. What's the next number I will draw? Oh my God, plus two. Okay. And what does it look like? Two hackers. Yeah. Two hackers behind the bus, right? So uh, for this two hacker, the situation is even sadder because she has to wait till the end of time, and then one further day. <laughs> This is omega plus two, and therefore you see that omega plus two and omega plus one are really larger numbers than omega, settling this question. Who would have to be yeah. those two hackers get on the bus? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so, I mean, would ask that. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, uh, the hackers inside this bus. We well, can get them in there because if everyone gets one back, uh, one yeah. seat. Uh, right, the they, 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 they would fit, fit but then the bus. would be an omega again. They, right, they would fit, and then we would have Omega again. But the hackers in here are not so kind to allow those guys <laughs> to get in front of them. Yeah. So if, for this mental model to work, you have to assume that there's no like skipping the queue. Yeah? Uh, every person here in the game uh, uh, tries to enforce the law that nobody gets in front of them. Yeah? Yeah? How does it matter the end of the time? Yeah, well, you have to like have some religious uh, thinking for this, yeah? Um, after that, we have omega plus 3 and omega plus 4 and so on. And then, one of you said it? Yeah, same bus. So omega plus omega. The first bus and a second bus. Filled with people which I'm too lazy to draw. Yeah? This is omega plus omega, or how can we shorten it? Two omega, two omega right. Two omega. These are two buses. Yeah? Just make a, a quick check when everybody gets served. So these persons get served inside this like uh, side altar time. Yeah? Then we have to wait till the end of time. Then this person is served, then this one, then this one, then this one, and so on and so on. Yeah? The last person in the first class is also yeah. served at the end of time. It's very good that you ask this, but there is no last person inside the first bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very important to realize that. There are omega many people in the first bus yeah. which are served after end of time. Or minus no, one. no. All those people in the first bus will get served at some finite point in time. Maybe on day three, maybe on day one million. Yeah, but then there are not omega people in the first class. There are, because there's also a person who will get served at day one billion. And one person sure. will get served at day one billion billion and yeah? You have infinitely many persons in here, but each of those will get served at some finite point in time. Yeah, you're actually saying omega minus one equals omega. Um, I'm not introducing um, subtraction yet. <laughs> These kind of numbers, there is no subtraction. So in mathematics, there are several kinds of infinitely large numbers. These are the ordinal numbers. We will also talk about cardinal numbers later on in this talk. And for both the, uh, of these kinds of numbers, you cannot subtract. There are different um, ranges of infinitely large numbers, for instance, the, the surreal numbers or the hyperreal numbers. There you can subtract, but we are not talking about these at the moment. And at the back, there was a question. 
Yeah, I want to divide by two, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No limit. Well. Only addition add multiplication. And yeah. And how is the first the person on the second bus? Yeah. In a better position than the first person on the third bus. I mean, we, we still uh, we don't yet have a third bus, but we can go to it. Like uh, right. <coughs> yeah. Let's let's tackle this on the next slide. Two omega plus one. So we have a post office, then a bus, then a second bus, and then one hacker waiting. The situation is really bad for this hacker. <laughs> because first she has to wait till the end of time. Then these persons are getting served. And then she has to wait for a second end of time. And only then will she get served. Like she will get served really, really late. <laughs> This is two omega plus one. It's a perfect post office. <laughs> Worst post office ever. Okay. <laughs> right. The most popular one. Most popular. They have lots of coffee and tea and they, people really enjoy staying there. They're, yeah. Diagonalization tricks? Could yeah. Put them all in one bus? Yeah. That's, uh, that would be possible and we'll talk about it in the second part of the talk. But uh, these people always don't want any other people to get in front of them. Therefore, we cannot do any diagonalization tricks. Okay, you probably have some grasp of the story now. After 2 omega plus 1, there's 2 omega plus 2, 2 omega plus 3, and so on. And finally, we'll reach 3 omega, which is 3 buses. Then, much after that, we'll have 4 omega, 5 omega, 6 omega, and so on and so on. And then, after that? Omega. Omega, omega times omega, right. Right, which is omega squared. So this is like an infinite Q of buses. Infinite Q of buses. <laughs> yeah. And the way I imagine this is using a magical parking space. A magical parking space where the parking slots are numbered first slot, second, third. On each of these slots, there's this one of these magical buses. But from the outside, like it's magic, the parking, uh, the parking place will only be like 10 meters times 10 meters, so that we can easily think about it. This is omega uh, squared, omega times omega. Okay, and after that. Yeah, but immediately after that? <laughs> omega squared plus 1, right? So, <laughs> that's the situation. <laughs> and this I has stuck, right? <laughs> because she has to wait not for one end of time, or two, or three, or ten billion, but for infinitely many ends of time. And only then will she get served. Okay? Okay, let's, let's try to uh, like escalate a little bit more. I've heard uh, omega to the 3. How can I draw omega to the 3? <coughs> yeah, a magic garage. Right. So, this is a three-dimensional building. Obviously. <laughs> it has infinitely many layers. And on each layer, we have one of those infinite parking spots from before, where you have infinitely many slots, where on each slot you have one of this, these uh, magic buses. So this is omega to the 3. <coughs> omega to the 3. And then you can go on, right? Omega to the 4. How can I draw omega to the 4? Sorry, again? Yeah, right. Uh, a whole street full of laws. So, like we have an infinitely long street, and on each house number of this infinitely long street, we have one of these magical garages. <laughs> this is omega to the four. Omega to the five. More city. Right, we have infinitely many cities, each containing one of those infinitely long street streets. I more streets in the city. Right, right. <laughs> and we have omega to the six, omega to the seven and so on and so on. 
and then omega to the omega, right. Okay, and omega to the omega, this is the biggest infinity you get. There's no larger infinity than this. <laughs> right. Of course, omega to the omega is not the biggest infinity because there's an even bigger one, omega to the omega plus one. This is greater than omega to the omega. Yeah? And you can continue along and along and just be creative and then you will always get larger kinds of infinities. And um, so I don't want to discourage you here, but to a real, so there's a branch of mathematics which studies these kinds of numbers. This is called set theory. And so like an honest set theorist, all those numbers which we've talked about are like very, very tiny, very puny numbers <laughs> like, like for the small children to play with. Yeah. The real set theorists use, uh, talk about numbers which are much, much, much larger than the ones we have been talking about. And in fact, there's a, there's a, there's a hard problem of naming those large numbers. Yeah, you can mathematically show that naming those large kinds of numbers gets more difficult and more difficult as, as you advance to infinity. Before we come to the second part of the talk, I want to I have show a question. you one thing. But sure, how, how can you say advance to infinity? Haven't we no, already uh, surpassed and infinity? Advanced and advanced. It was a bad usage of words. Okay. No, sorry. Yeah? No. There's no, there's no, like, end, yeah? You can always go on. Therefore, it was just a pure speech. I have a question to you. So we have seen what's omega plus one. What's one plus omega? One plus omega. How can we draw one plus omega? The person in front of the bus. In front of the bus, right. So we have the post office, then the person, and then the bus. <coughs> so this is one plus omega, right? Okay, and then check when will everybody be served. This cycle will be served immediately. This, the day after that, the day after that, the day after that, and so on and so on. And you see, this is exactly the same situation as with omega. So, 1 plus omega is not a number which is larger than omega, but 1 plus omega is ju still just omega. Okay? So, in, with every time practice with usual numbers, we are accustomed that the order of addition doesn't make any difference. For instance, um, I don't know what 5 plus 7 is, but in any case, it's the same as 7 plus 5. Order does not matter with addition, right? This is not the case with the ordinary numbers we have been studying. The, it, uh, the order for addition is important. What, omega plus 1 is more than omega, but 1 plus omega is just omega. Yeah. I don't, can you why is this the same? Why is it the same? Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody, every, every hacker waiting in line will get served at some finite point. No hacker here has to wait till the end of time. Therefore, we are still not in the business of those large numbers we've been studying before. Okay. It's exactly the same as with Omega. You can even imagine this person entering the bus here and standing in front of that. Then every, every hacker on the bus will be okay with this move because they will not, not lose a day waiting. Yeah? And then you see that it's exactly the same situation as Omega. Why they would not lose a day? That is the first... They because they, wait, they have to wait for this bus to get served anyway. Yeah. So they, they don't care whether this person is standing in front of the bus or whether it's the first person inside of the bus. Okay. Yeah. Everybody has to wait exactly the same amount of time. Uh, it doesn't matter whether this person is standing here or, or there. Okay. Yeah? yeah? I cannot see how this is different from omega plus one. Yeah, but with omega plus one, I reload this slide. <laughs> <laughs> With omega plus one, we have this hacker who is very sad because she has to wait till the end of time to I, get served. And why? Everybody inside the bus is served at a finite point of time. Right, right. So the day after 
the finite point of time? Yeah, this, this, uh, please, this please, please tell me the number of this thing. Oh, you can't, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not the number, right? So yeah, sure. all the persons in, in here will, will get stuck at some finite point in time, but this point in time will get larger and larger, yeah? Like this person will get stuck on day two, it's, it's very nice, yeah? This on day 10, this on day one billion, this on day one fantastillion, yeah? And so on. And it never stops. And this person will only get served after end of time. We have the same number of people in both cases. Yeah, we have. So it takes the same amount of time to solve them. No. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right, but we have the same amount of people, and we have discussed this in a, in a minute, yeah, yeah. when we are in the second part of the form. But you're not correct that it will take the same amount of time. Psychologically, if you're inside the bus, you yeah. can look in front of you, and you can always count down yeah. in front of you. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. That hacker yeah. can't even, like, if you know, yeah. like, he never stops yeah. counting if he yeah. starts counting guys. Yes. Yeah. Each time the sun rises, <coughs> this hacker sees exactly the same thing as before, namely infinitely many hackers waiting in front of her. By contrast, all of these hackers here are, are always like have have a, have the goal in, in reach, yeah, because they know ah just one billion days more, yeah, <laughs> and then only like nine hundred nine hundred million and so on and so on, nine cells. Okay, so each day it's it's getting better for those guys, but for this hacker she has to wait till the end of time. So, so it when makes a difference if you are inside or outside the bus, and if you are before or after the bus. Yeah, that makes uh, that uh, that is a crucial difference, right? <laughs> because you cannot skip the line. You are you are in a queue, and you may not fall anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say that one plus omega is not equal to omega plus one? Yeah, right. Yeah. This is okay, okay with your method. Uh, no, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can ask again and and try to give a better answer. No, no, I understand. I'm just like placing things in my hands. So okay. Kind of okay. 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 Yeah. I understood why uh, this is different yeah. than putting him in front. Yeah. Uh, even though we have the same amount of people. Yeah. How, however, is this different from putting him after a second bus? I uh, can see the, the mm -hmm. difference. Yeah. How is he yeah. more happy yeah, yeah. than the other? We have a slide for that, right? <laughs> um, here. So here, this is a different situation than omega plus one, because here this hacker has to wait till the end of time, and then again wait for the next end of time before she will get served. So here she has to wait for two ends of time. Beforehand, she only had to wait for one end of time. But in both cases, she can't have a number. In both cases, I mean, yeah. omega plus one plus omega. Yeah, it's still associated, but it's not cumulative. Yeah. So what's omega plus one plus omega? Two omega? Or? Omega. Um, you mean I have to draw? Omega plus one plus omega, right? So um, this number? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can simplify this to two omega. She couldn't get the because, second bus. Because, if you don't trust me on this, just think it through. We have one bus, then a single hacker waiting, then a second bus. And this single hacker waiting, it's exactly the same as we uh, uh, spoke a couple of minutes ago. This uh, could just enter a second bus at the very front, and you see, then you see it's two omega. Yeah? The not skipping the line is because we have ordered numbers and not unordered numbers, which would be Hilbert. Yeah, order, yeah, right. Which you're coming to, I guess. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. No skipping. Yeah. In, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Let's see what you've done there. Yeah. If you have omega, omega. Yeah. I mean, in this, hackers can't leave buses. Sorry. Uh, hackers can't leave buses. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, because otherwise, if you have omega plus omega, yeah. you move all the omega, all the people from the first bus into the second bus. Yeah. But they can't leave. No, no, no. But no. they can enter the bus. They are fixing the types of the buses, and they always enforce the law that there's no skipping in the queue. But there wouldn't be any skipping if all the people from the first bus went to the second bus. Y yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you always enter the bus in the front. Right, they always enter the bus in the front. Yeah. But if everybody from the first bus went to the second bus, yeah. the first person yeah. has to get out first. Yeah. You can't get the last person to get out first. Ah, uh, because there is no last person. <laughs>
And in this new free review room, the long traveler can check it. So this is the place where the next progress should be placed. <laughs> <laughs> It, okay, yeah, so we see even so, for all rooms where we are full, we can still manage to check in another guest. And then we have coming up plus one room. We still have only LF0 many rooms. So the number of rooms was fixed. Yeah, we did not like build a new room. Yeah, bye bye. Like same yeah. situation as yeah. with the bus when you put the uh, neck in front of the bus. And one plus omega would be uh, uh, omega, and this is a, a similar situation. Okay. This shows that alex zero plus one is just alex zero. Yeah, because we were able. So be beforehand, yeah, before the long traveler arrived, we had alex zero many guests fitting into this hotel. And after that, we have LF0 plus one main guests fitting into the hotel. But the hotel is still the same size as before. Therefore, we see that LF0 plus one is still just LF0. And if we are talking about size instead of order, uh, then the, um, it doesn't matter whether you do LF0 plus one or one plus LF0. From the amount of people, it's the same either way. Okay, so this is Aleph 0 plus 1. There's a question. So is Aleph 0 greater in size than Omega? No, from size they are exactly the same. Because each time there are infinitely many persons. So are they the same? No, they are not the same because this is a cardinal number. And the numbers from before are ordinal numbers. These are separate systems for dealing with infinitely large numbers. The thing is, um, in ordinary life, yeah, we are only dealing, dealing with finite numbers. And there, there's no difference between order and size. Yeah? Like, if you have a queue of three persons standing in front of you, then you can either say, okay, so from the order, it's looking like three, or you can say, from the amount of people, it's looking like three. But as soon as we are dealing with infinitely large numbers, there's a difference between order and size. And for order, we use those Greek letters, omega, and for size, for amount, we use the uh, Hebrew letter. Yeah? So the difference between the two kinds uh, would be that with the ordinal numbers, we, we ask the last person how much he would weigh, whereas with the cardinal numbers, we see the size of the hotel or how many hotels we have in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the cardinal numbers, we see the size, and with the ordinal numbers, we always have the queue in our head. Yeah. Okay, so what's Alex zero plus two? Alex zero plus two. Right. Alex zero plus two, and it doesn't matter in which way we do the addition. Alex zero plus two is still just Alex zero, because if two travelers arrive, then the guest can simply skip two rooms. Then the first two rooms will be free, and there those two persons can check in. Okay. So, what's the, the next slide? What will happen now? One of the buses with infinitely many persons arrives. <laughs> First, we have one bus arrive. Yeah, I put myself back. Okay, so we have the hotel. It's full. So we have Aleph zero many people here. And then we have the bus, it's full too. So we have Alex zero people here again. So in total we have Alex zero plus Alex zero many people. Alex zero plus Alex zero. Yeah, but we have to really understand why it's the same. So we will not accept um, an argument like, well, there are too many, therefore it's still Alex zero. We want to really see how we can fit in all those people in the Hilbert Sota. If we are not able to see this, then we are not justified in saying that it's still just the same amount of people. Now we want to talk rigorously about it. And we have to mistrust our intuition, because our intuition was involved with dealing with finite numbers, and now we are dealing with infinite numbers. Now, therefore, we always have to like, think really carefully. Do any of you have an idea how to fit 
these infinitely many facets in her dot solver. Well, can you use the same algorithm of moving one first in one row? And yeah. I can, of course, do this infinite times. Yeah, that's one possibility. So the Hoffman manager could just, could just make like a call and say, please advance one room. And then, like two minutes after that, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, please again advance one room. <laughs> and again and again and again. But the Hoffman manager and the infinitely many guests will not like this procedure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the goal is to finish the whole action with one call. Move Aleph. Move Aleph. This is a very good idea. So the hotel manager could say, dear guests, sorry for the inconvenience, please move Aleph zero many, uh, many rooms. But this, if you think about it, it's not uh, like a good um, uh, command because moving Aleph zero rooms means Checking out of the hotel, out of the room with the, uh, the luggage, yeah, and then advancing, advancing this, this <laughs> tunnel, and never entering again a room. Yeah, and zero means go on forever. Yeah, so it's a very good attempt, and I'm very glad that somebody here mentioned this attempt, but it's not the best one. Yeah, move to the square of the of the room. To the square or to the double. Yeah, so the hotel manager can say, dear guests, sorry for the inconvenience please move to the double of your room number. So the guest in, number, in room number one will move to room number two. The guest in room number two will move to room number four. The guest in room number three will move to room number six, and so on. And then all those rooms with odd numbered numbers will be free. Room number one will be free, room number three will be free, room number five will be free, and so on and so on. And in these infinitely many rooms, the hackers from this infinitely large box can exactly fit. And this is the reason why R of zero plus R of zero is just R of zero. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It, so now we are talking about amount, about size. And there we can just place everybody where you want it. It's just a, a matter of thinking about that amount of people. Can we add uh, Aleph plus Omega? No, because then we would be mixing a number system. Yeah. I just want to repeat this. Yeah. So we have Aleph zero many rooms, and we were able to fit in Aleph zero plus Aleph zero many people in there. And this is the reason why Alex zero plus Alex zero is still just Alex zero. Okay. Good. Next, infinitely many buses arrive with infinitely many people inside them each. Yeah. Um, and I think this will be an exercise <laughs> because I want to show you one more thing, and we don't have the time. So I invite you to think about in your spare time. I just bought. <coughs> we have Hilbert's Hotel, it's completely booked. And then we have Alex zero many buses containing Alex zero persons each. The first bus, the second, uh, the, the first bus, the second bus, the third bus, the fourth bus, and so on. Uh, this is like drawn from the top, so each of those dots is one person waiting to get in into the hotel. And I promise to you. So how many people are, do we see here? It's Alex zero times Alex zero, right? Right? Length times width. Alex zero times length. So this could also be um, named L of zero squared. And I promise to you that it's just R of zero again. But do not accept this on face, but, but rather think about in your spare time how uh, the hotel manager could make a call so that all those people could check in into the hotel. And you should remember that there's only one call acceptable. Yeah? So no infinitely long action, but it should be over at, at some time. Um, you, you want to spoil it? Or? <laughs> <laughs>
uh, why is a zero in LF0? Um, it's just a, a number. Uh, so, uh, it's a great question because I want to escalate to the last thing. Um, yeah, I'll answer it in, in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, in the first part of the talk, we have seen order numbers. And it was very easy to get to higher order numbers simply by adding one at the end. Of course, right? Now we have seen the current numbers, a different system for dealing with infinitely large numbers. And there was like part to advance to our next level. In fact, all kinds of sizes which we've seen before are just RLF0. And even here, where we have infinitely many buses containing <coughs> infinitely many persons each, from the amount, it's still only RLF0. So there might be a question which you might ask, namely, is there any higher kind of infinity if we are dealing with size? Or if we are dealing with life, is there just one level of infinity, namely RF0? Okay, and the answer is yes, there are more levels of infinity. And then immediately the next level of infinity after RF0 is RF1. <coughs> And after that, we have RF2, and so on, and so on. And after that, we have RF7, RF1 billion, RF1 million, <laughs> because they are in a queue, yeah? And then we have RF omega plus 1, RF omega squared, and so on, and so on. And I still, uh, but, uh, so the last thing I want to do with you is, I want to really show you a set whose sizes are LF1. I do not want you to trust me that there are size the sets which are as large as LF1. I want to show you one of those sets. Yeah? I want to know why can't there be a set between LF0 and LF1? I think it is the thing. OK. So I need you to, to all take a deep breath, because this will be three hard minutes. After that, the talk's over, but this will be like three very hard minutes. <laughs> okay. You all know a set whose size is larger than RF0. It's the set of real numbers. Like all numbers uh, 3, 7, 1.5, but also like uh, digits, uh, like numbers like pi, which are transcendent, where you will never have a repetition in the digits, like 3.1, 4, 1, 5, 9, and so on and so forth. Okay? This is the set of real numbers. And the set of real, uh, there are more real numbers than RF0. This is the claim, and I want to prove this claim to you. Okay? And we do this by proof, of con uh, proof by contradiction. So, imagine by proof of contradiction that it was possible to fit all of the real numbers into the hotel. Then we could have a look at the guest list of the hotel manager. The hotel manager keeps a list of it, uh, uh, her guests, guest number one, two, three, and right, the front, uh, uh, right beneath the number is the name of the guest. Yeah? So the guests who check in are numbers, and the name of each number is just you know, that set. So for instance, in room number one, we could have five. Small q pi is living in room number one. After that, we could have e. Okay. E is living in room number two. Maybe. Yeah, it could also be like a different number. We will uh, we'll see that it doesn't work either way. So after that, we have an easy number, maybe 5.777777. And afterwards, we have 6.010000. I don't care. So the hotel manager is claiming that she was able to fit all real numbers into the hotel. We are claiming that she's lying. And we want to clearly demonstrate that the hotel manager has missed ex at least one real number. <coughs> and we do this by actually writing down a number who has not checked into the hotel, even though the hotel manager claims that all real numbers have checked in the door. And to do this, we have a look at the diagram. 
yeah, or diagonal. And then we start to write down a number. And we do this by walking along the diagonal and always picking a digit which is not there. So the first digit in the square is a 3. So we are now pick a digit which is not 3. For instance, 4. OK. Now we have a 7. We are now pick a digit which is not this 7. 4. Four. OK. Again, in the next square, we have the 7. We pick a digit which is not 7. <laughs> we have a 0. We have to pick a digit which is not 0. 1. <laughs> 1. <laughs> OK, and we go on and go on in this way, yeah, in this manner. OK, now, I, I love this. <laughs> this real number is, has not actually checked into the whole and we can show this because it's not possible that this number is living in room number one. Because the real number which is living in number in room number one has a different first digit. But it's also not the case that this new number is living in room number two, because it differs from the real number which is living in room number two in its second digit. It's also not possible that this number is have a different digit we have a different one million digit at the top. So you see that this number has not actually checked in. This is a number which the Hoka manager has missed. Okay. And it didn't matter what the guest, li uh, the guest list of the Hoka manager actually looked like. Yeah? We, were, we, we could always find a new number which the Hoka manager has missed. And this is the reason why there are more real numbers than Alex zero. Therefore, we have really a, a, an escalation of size, even with the current numbers. Yeah? But why is then not the person with the same number from the door? Yeah. Talking to him the yeah, way. you could check in this number, right? But then a different real number would be missing. And no matter how you do it, there will always be a number missing, because, assume for the contrary, that you somehow managed to fit, fit in all the numbers in the hotel, then you can do this, and then you see, oh, well, I missed one. Yeah. How do you reach Alex 1? After which point? Like, what do you mean by reaching? I mean, uh, I will die. <laughs> 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 Alex 0 to Alex 0, right? Alex, mm. Alex 0 to the Alex 0 is still just Alex 0. Ah, you mean how to reach it with a, like, yeah, yeah. An, uh, a, a term, like adding, multiplying, yeah. uh, you don't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, the final minute of this talk, there was a question. So, is there any um, size between R0 and the size which the real numbers have? That's a very good question. One could think that maybe the racial numbers fit in exactly between. It's true that they fit in between, but they are actually exactly the same amount as the natural numbers. There are as many fractions as there are natural numbers. It's weird, but you can ask me after the talk. OK. Cantor himself, who developed this theory, uh, thought for a long time that there would be no intermediate layer of infinity, that you either have the number uh, infinity out of 0, or you have the infinity of how many real numbers there are. And he tried to prove it, and he tried to prove it, and he failed, he failed for 10 years. Then afterwards, he thought, yeah, well, maybe it's wrong. Maybe there's an intermediate layer. And he tried to find this intermediate layer. And he tried to, and he tried to, and he tried to, and he failed on the canvas. And then again he thought, yeah, well, maybe there is no intermediate layer. And he tried to prove that there's an intermediate layer, and again he failed. And the story goes on, and it's like that he eventually ended up in a like, uh, house, in a silo. Yeah? Nowadays we know the answer. 1930, Gödel has shown that you cannot show that there's an intermediate layer. <laughs> <laughs> and 1960, Cohen has shown that you cannot show that there's no intermediate layer. <laughs> what? It's a question which cannot be tackled. Yeah? So the usual axiom of mathematics do not suffice to settle this question. You can neither show that there's an, infinite, there's an immediate intermediate layer, nor you can show that there's no intermediate layer. It's just a question which we, we and even aliens and God and nobody can ever settle. 
Thank you very much for your attention.